trains. Hey everyone, summer is heating up and so are the 3D printing deals. Whether you're a kid on summer break, a parent of a kid who's bored and needs something to do, an interested tinker, or somebody just looking to make cool things, we are taking a look at my current top five recommendations for the best 3D printers for the summer of 2023. Before we dive in too far, please keep in mind that everything on this list is 100% subjective based off of videos that I've watched, things that I've read, and other various independent research that I've done. Don't take the advice of any one person when it comes to making a purchasing decision. However, if you did find this video useful in any way and want to purchase a machine that we talked about, I will have links in the description below and some of those links can help support the channel so that way we can grow, buy more gear, buy new printers, talk about more things, or maybe even get this place insulated so that way we can add air conditioning because it's really hot in the shed. But I still wanna make awesome content for you guys, so here we are, let's dive in. Kicking off our list of printers that's in no particular order is going to be the Elegoon Neptune 3 Pro. Coming in at an average price tag of around $229, the Neptune 3 Pro is going to give you a ton of features. This thing is like if you took an Ender 3 and you put it on steroids, the Ender 3 grew up and is being made by a different company. So in that price tag, what do you get? You get a dual gear direct drive extruder, which love that. Direct drive is my favorite, if at all possible, to get on a machine. You get a flexible magnetic build plate, which fantastic. Personally, I can't stand glass build plates, so this is an absolute win in my opinion. You get dual part cooling fans, which is an upgrade that a lot of us do on our own. A filament runout sensor and automatic bed leveling. In theory, this machine is going to be really easy to keep moving for a long period of time with minimal user intervention. One thing that I think is really cool that Elegoo did with this machine is on the Z gantry, the part that goes up and down, they have these really cool like little graphics, which speaking of the Z gantry, you have two Z rods, which means that the X axis is going to be better supported, which will have less sagging, removing some artifacts from printing, and it's going to increase your overall print accuracy. One of my favorite features about the machine is the fact that the way you interact with it is this little detachable screen, which is attached with a coiled cable, kind of like an old school phone cord back when those things used to have cables. You remember that? Pepperidge Farm remembers. But in all seriousness, I haven't personally had a chance to test out an Elegoon Neptune machine yet, but I do have one on the way, and I'm really excited for that. I've heard a lot of you guys talking in the comments and with various sources who have said that Elegoo is making some really cool machines, you wanna see some featured on the channel, and I'm really excited to be able to provide that, so stay tuned for those videos. Coming up next on the list is a double whammy. I guess we're throwing some bonus content in there to keep things moving. We're talking about the Soval SV06 and SV06 Plus. Now, the SV06 platform is heavily inspired by, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, the Prusa i3, Mark III, Mark II, basically the Prusa lineup of 3D printers. What makes the SV06 machines fantastic is they took what was great about the Mark III and threw it into modern times. Basically, you get the 32-bit main board, you get linear rods, not linear rails, they're rods with linear bearings. They're a little bit different, but it is still vastly superior, in my opinion, to V-wheels because you don't have to worry about them being tensioned. You don't have to worry about them wearing out nearly as quickly. So I think that's a major upgrade that also adds rigidity to the build. And what rigidity means is you can actually push these machines even faster. They are fantastic with Clipper. In fact, we recently upgraded one of my best friends, SV06, to Clipper. We did that off camera. It was just a personal project for some fun. And that machine is absolutely screaming. He's having a blast. Would highly recommend if you pick one of these up. But what's the deal with these two machines? Well, basically, if you imagine an i3 Mark III or similar style printer, and you throw some injection molded parts onto it, you make the color scheme teal and black instead of orange and black, you have the SV06 lineup. In terms of price, the SV06 is normally going to be around $299, and the SV06 Plus is going to be around $399, which I think that's a really good deal for both of these machines. Both of them, you get those linear rods that we talked about. You get a direct drive extruder, which is powered by a planetary gear, which I think is really neat. What that means is the stepper motor is going to be able to generate more torque on the filament, which will be able to give more consistent control with the extrusion. It's a really nice looking package overall. One downside to both of these machines being so similar is you do get the same wimpy part cooling fan. And if you want to upgrade your machine to be able to push the speeds a little bit faster or improve your quality, 
take a look at my video, which will be linked below, on upgrading the part cooling fan on the SV06. It was a really quick upgrade, not a lot of skill goes into it, and it would be a great first printer modification project if you decide to pick one of these up. The mod should be able to be done the same on both machines. The SV06 Plus has a few advantages over the SV06. The SV06 is going to come in at 220 by 220 by 250 on the Z, whereas the SV06 Plus is going to come in at 300 by 300 by 340 on the Z, which means you will be able to print full-size helmets. So if you want to print big, spend the extra money on the SV06 Plus. And one downside about printing big is if you're running a multi-day print, you're going to be more concerned about how much filament you have left. Well, you're in luck because the SV06 Plus is going to give you a filament runout sensor by default, whereas with the SV06, you would have to add one yourself. Fantastic. One interesting thing about the larger platform of the SV06 Plus is the fact it includes a volcano style hot end assembly. And what a volcano style hot end basically means is it has a longer melt zone. The longer melt zone means that the material is going to be more completely melted and is is going to have an increased flow rate. So this larger platform machine is going to pair really, really nicely with a larger diameter nozzle, like a 0.6 or a 0.8. So if you're doing something big, like my Bunny Trooper helmet, you're going to be able to print that in less time at potentially the expense of more filament. And with that runout sensor, you won't have to be as concerned about the machine failing because you ran out of filament. It won't just keep going and printing into thin air as long as the runout sensor does its job. One other little thing that they throw on the SV06 Plus that you don't get with the SV06 is the Plus has a touch screen so it's a little bit more of a premium experience realistically you're not going to interact with the screen that much i don't really mind the old school screens and i really like the sv06 platform with clipper that machine is capable of going really fast if you let it i would consider that if you want to get into some more of the advanced things and then you won't have to worry about interacting with the screen at all the next printer on our list is going to come as no surprise to any of you it's my current favorite machine that i own it's the bamboo p1p the p1p for me has only become more valuable because Bamboo recently reduced the price to $599 and then announced the P1S. As it sits right now, in my opinion, the P1P is still one of the absolute best machines that you can buy, especially for the new decreased price. You get a build volume of 256 millimeter cubed. The thing prints super quick, significantly faster than all of my other printers, except for maybe the Anchor Make. That one can go pretty quick too, but the Anchor Make does not make as nice of prints as the Bamboo. For that $599 now, you get a machine that is so assembled that you have to take screws out of it to be able to use it. That is fantastic. So if this is your first printer or you've decided that you're over the hassle of building machines, this one's worth it. You get access to Bamboo Studio, which is a pretty straightforward slicer program that is continuing to evolve. There are more features being added, both thanks to community development in terms of the soft fever fork of Bamboo Studio, uh, known as Orca Slicer, and the new features that are being added to Prusa Slicer, which Bamboo Studio is based on. So it does get more and more complete. You get a mobile app that you can use to monitor your prints. Now, as of the time of filming, you do have to be connected to the same Wi-Fi network, but don't worry. I do believe that Bamboo is working on a solution to that. If Anchor can do it, Bamboo can do it as well. I can use my Bamboo app at home right now and I could use my Anchor app from anywhere. If I do have a print in my history, so if I wanna reprint the same thing and I now have a clear build plate, I can start a print on the bamboo from the app outside of my home. A little workaround that I have personally used is I use Chrome Remote Desktop to check my home computer when I'm out of the house to see what's on the bamboo and slice new prints. It's a little bit small and can be a little bit finicky, but there's a little bit of a pro tip for you. Remote Desktop works pretty well to slice prints on the go. I absolutely love my bamboo. Bamboo, and I don't have an affiliate link for them, so I will use Loyal Moseses, who is an absolutely fantastic content creator, both here on YouTube and Twitch. I'm a big fan of what he's doing for the 3D printing community, so I wanna to try to help him out a little bit if possible. Next up on our list of top printers for summer of 2023 so far is the Anycubic Cobra 2. I've had a couple of Anycubic machines like the Cobra Go that we're giving away when we hit a thousand subscribers. Link to that video in the description below. Make sure you're entered. I want to give you a 3D printer. And I've used the Anycubic Viper, both of which I've had pretty good results with. So when I saw the announcement for the Cobra 2, I got really excited. This thing is going to be a fast mover. They're claiming it can 
print up to 250 millimeters a second, which they're recommending you keep it at about 150 millimeters a second for best results. A lot of printers up to this point have been tuned with profiles around 40 to 60 millimeters a second. So that's significantly faster, meaning you'll be able to go from idea to finished product a whole lot quicker than ever before. Any printer can go fast if you're willing to put in the work, but if you want to buy speed in a box, that's a good way to do it. Now with that build volume, the Cobra 2 does come in at a bit of a steep price tag. It is going to be roughly $419. I mean, 3D printers go on sale all the time on their various sources. So you have to keep your eye out and see what kind of deals you can catch. But $419, give or take, seems to be the going price when the machine's not on sale. You might be asking yourself, why did he include another Ender 3 style machine on this list? And frankly, I just think that the Cobra 2 is a really interesting machine. You get a direct drive hot end extruder setup, which reminds me a lot of like the Voron Stealth Burner, which inside of that tool head, you get their new Levick 2.0 automatic bed leveling system, auto bed leveling. Yeah, that's a win. And it's a reverse Bowden system. So basically what that means is there is still a Bowden tube guiding the filament from the spool holder slash spool into the extruder, but the filament's not being pushed into the hot end, but pulled into it. And that's really interesting. That's the same type of setup that you have on the bamboo machines and some others. You can bypass that, but they put it there for you to be able to use it. And that does help to make sure you don't just have filament going all over the place. Something else that really piqued my interest with the Cobra 2 is they're using these like steel wheels on steel rails instead of normal V wheels or linear rails slash rods and why I found that so interesting is my X tool D1 laser engraver uses the same system and it's worked out pretty well for me so far what I immediately think of is I think these wheels will last longer because they're not a soft plastic wearing away on the aluminum extrusion it's harder metal on harder metal I'm curious what the long-term noise would be like and you'll definitely need to keep them lubricated for best results so if you're looking for a machine that's in the same vein as an ender 3 or the Neptune, but has some interesting takes on the feature set, definitely give the Cobra a check out. I think the magnetic build plate, fantastic. Auto leveling, fantastic. Direct drive extruder, fantastic. Touch screen, kind of a moot point. Flexible build plate, great. Automatic bed leveling, even better. Direct drive, love it. I think that if you want a cool machine, something fun to tinker with that'll go fast, the Cobra 2 is the way to go. It's a fantastic looking machine, great in theory, and I've heard a lot of people seem to be really enjoying them so far. As we are nearing our fifth and final printer of the list, I do want to take the time to have an honorable mention. Between my first list and this list, the Prusa Mark IV came out. And you might think that that'd be my honorable mention, but it isn't. It's actually going to be the Mark III, and here's why. Since the Mark IV came out, Mark III prices on the resale market have dropped through the floor. You can get outstanding deals on a Mark III slash 3S plus slash whatever variant of a Mark III on Craigslist list and Facebook marketplace. I'm seeing these things for like 300 bucks. And if you could find that deal, I would take that over any of these new printers. In my opinion, the Mark three is a super proven platform. It's been going the distance for several years. Sure. It's a little bit dated and the SVO six has some upgraded features that it doesn't have, but the Mark three has been out a lot longer and people have thousands and thousands of hours on their Mark three to a ton of success. So many people use them as print farm machines because they're so reliable and there's a huge community support behind it and Prusa themselves has some support. So I would consider picking up one of those used if you can find the right deal on it. Rounding out our list of the top five 3D printers for the summer of 23 is actually going to be the Elegoo Mars 3. This is gonna be the first time that I've talked about resin in any great-ish detail or recommended a resin printer on the channel. And that's because personally, I don't like resin printing that much. I love what it's capable of and I love the results. And I love the idea behind it. Resin printing at its core is really simple compared to FDM. But in practice, it's a lot messier, it's a lot trickier, and some of the learning curve things are steeper. You have to learn a little bit about support placement. You have to learn a little bit about hollowing out models, figuring out best orientations to make sure your model isn't super stuck to the build plate. And resin is very, very get chemical burns toxic. So if you do end up picking up a resin printer, please be as safe as you possibly can. I don't wanna hear any more 
stories of people getting hurt with these machines. That means wear gloves. Be very careful when you're removing supports and keep your resin workspace as clean as possible. Being said, if you want to get into resin 3D printing, the Mars 3 is a great choice. The Mars 3 has a normal price tag of around $273 and it is for a 4K mono display. What does that mean? 4K is the resolution of the screen. So resin printers work off of UV light and masking. So essentially there's a screen inside of the printer that's basically like a smartphone screen and it masks off the individual layers and a UV light shines through exposing the resin. That's it's UV photosensitive resin. So that means the resin partially cures with UV light exposure from the machine. And as the layers build, they're at a much smaller layer height than your FDM machines, giving you way less layer lines and a lot smoother results, and you're able to print really tiny details with a lot more ease. That 4K screen basically is going to smooth out the corners and make sure that prints are a little bit less pixely. So it's going to be super accurate, super detailed. Your details are gonna be crisp, like the first bite into a fresh fall apple. Crispy. The drawback to resin machines is for that increased price, you do have a really small build volume. The Mars 3 is coming in at one 43 by 89 by 175. So you're not going to be printing really big things, but most people get resin printers because they want small, super detailed parts, or they want to do things like D&D minis or tiny things like that. I liked making green lantern rings with mine. As a quick aside, when you're diving into the world of resin 3D printing, there are a few things that you need to keep in mind that you need to pick up at the same time. You need nitrile gloves. That is for your personal safety while using the machine. You do not want to get this stuff on your hands. You're also going to need to pick up some isopropyl alcohol. 91% or 99% are going to be best. That's going to be very useful for cleaning your parts off and you'll need something to wash them with. I recommend springing for a wash and cure station if you're able to, but if you can't, something like a good Tupperware container, maybe with a strainer basket and a quality UV light. So you do have a couple of hidden costs in there. If you want to get into the world of high detailed resin 3D printing, the Mars 3 is going to be an absolutely fantastic place to start. There you go, guys. That concludes our list of the top five 3D printers for the summer of 2023. As always, I strongly encourage you to do your own independent research, watch videos and reviews and deep dives on whichever of these machines you might be interested in. I just want to provide kind of a general overview with these style of videos. If you found the video useful, give us a like. If you want to discuss anything a little bit further in the comments or give me some feedback on how I can improve in the future, drop a comment down below. And if you want to see more content like this or the evolution of the shed, maybe some deep dives on some of these printers, go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell. Share the video with a friend. The faster these videos grow, the more awesome things that we're going to be able to do, the cooler the content I'll be able to provide for you guys. As always, thanks for joining. Happy printing.